Hey everybody, Blake Root is here and I wanna show you five hidden gems in Photoshop that have really helped me tremendously with my workflow. And these are things that I didn't know in the very beginning and quite frankly, some of them I learned within the last year or so. Now the first one is snapshots in Adobe Camera Raw. So snapshots give you the opportunity to edit your image in multiple different ways, save it as a snapshot and refer to it whenever you want and all your settings go back to the way they were with that snapshot. And I realize that Adobe Camera Raw is a different thing than Photoshop, but it is the main interface that you're gonna be using for a raw file. So it is the start to your whole workflow. You'll find them right over here at the very end and you'll see here I already have three of them saved. For instance, I wanted to see what black and white would look like. But then I wanted to see what would happen if I made a, a hybrid between the two of them. So now I've got another snapshot that shows me what a nice blend of both would look like. So let's go ahead and go back to our basic settings and I'll go ahead and reset all of my Adobe Camera Raw defaults. And if I just go ahead and start moving around some of these sliders here, just get this to an exposure that I kind of like. So if we go over to our snapshots, down here at the bottom right hand corner, you're gonna see what looks like a page being torn away. I'll go ahead and click that. And let's just call this Four. So here's our snapshot number four, here's number three, here's number two, and here's number one. The beautiful part about this is that these are all captured right there in the XMP sidecar file in Adobe Camera Raw. So at any time, if you close this image down and open it back up, all of your snapshots will be there. The second hidden gem in Photoshop is the gradient map adjustment layer. Now, there are many ways that you can convert your images to black and white, whether that's using different programs or plugins outside of Photoshop or right within Photoshop, there are many different things that you can do. So if you want Ansel-esque style black and white photographs where the sky almost goes to a blackish color with those white clouds puffing through there, you're not gonna get this with any of the traditional forms of black and white post-production. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on an adjustment layer and press gradient map. By default, the gradient map that is built is a gradient map that is built by the default colors that you have in your color palette over here on the left hand side for typically what you would use with your brushes. But what that gradient map does is it takes all of the colors in your images and it associates the tone for them as they would be on their tonal values. And we can see that by just clicking on this gradient map and changing it to any one of the other gradients that we see in here. The black areas in the image are now like a purple color and the white areas in the image are more of an orange color. So I'll go ahead and press cancel on that. We'll just leave it the black and white. That was just to show you how we're mapping out our tones and that's what the gradient map does. By default, that's all it can really do, just map out the black to the white. But if I add another adjustment layer underneath here, which is the hue saturation adjustment layer, I can now use the targeted adjustment tool to select any of the colors in my image and manipulate the lightness, the saturation and the hue of that color, which is different than the black and white adjustment layer, which just allows you to edit the lightness or the luminance value of that color. So here, by changing the hue, I can make the blues a little bit darker or a little bit brighter, and you can see that the sky is really changing based on the hue of the color that I have selected. If I boost up that saturation, you're seeing here, we're getting some really dark blue skies back there, really bringing out those white clouds. Uh, and then if I adjust that lightness, I can make that lighter or darker. So now we get that really dark uh, black and white look in our image and I can click around the photograph and select any other colors that I want to manipulate. So if I turn off that gradient map though, check it out. That sky is really powerful and actually it's not quite true to the nature of what that sky looked like. But what we're using is those colors to manipulate the tones in our image. That really tripped me out because I saw a face in this image that I've never seen before and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> The third hidden gem I want to talk to you about right now is layer styles. And layer styles we typically think of when we're using things like shapes and text, but layer styles can be really powerful when used with adjustment layers. So what I have here is just a regular color fill layer that I typically use for color grading. It's one of my tricks that I have up my sleeve for color grading. And then right here, this layer one, this is actually just a gradient from white to black and then our image underneath. So if I click on this color fill, I'm just gonna do my traditional color uh, grading and just change this to something like soft light or color and then drop the opacity down a little bit. So you can see that that just gave our whole image a wash of blue. But what if I want my highlights to come out or my shadows to come out from underneath there? So if I double click on the color fill and right down here, you see something called underlying layer. 
These are blend if principles. With blend if, you can protect anything that is underneath this layer. So what I want you to change the name, change the name of underlying layer and change it to protect. Okay, so we're gonna protect anything underneath this that is either in shadows or in highlights. So if I move this over to the right, you can start to see that we're protecting all of the underlying shadow areas into our midtones. So if we press Alt or Option, we can get a nice smooth transition, a nice feathered transition in those dark areas. But it's very difficult to see. That is until we turn on the color overlay. When you turn on the color overlay, and I like to use the color magenta for this because magenta doesn't naturally really appear too much in our images, we can see exactly what our blend if options are adjusting in this image. So if I go over here to this right hand side to the highlights and start dropping this down, you can start seeing those highlights punching their way through that magenta color overlay that we have for this color fill. If I press Alt or Option and split and feather that, check that out. We got a nice transition that's telling me exactly where that blue is being affected. It's coming through as magenta right now, but all I gotta do is turn the color overlay off. We've got a really nice, successful color grade that blocks out both our highlights and our shadows. The next hidden gem that we have in Photoshop is the highlights and shadows adjustment. So what I have here is kind of a pre-baked image for you. This is what I call a radiating effect or a glowing type of effect on my image, which is nothing more than a duplicate copy of everything that's going on underneath this layer set to soft light with a Gaussian blur of about 50 pixels. But that radiant glow by itself, you can see it's doing some weird things to my shadows that it just makes it entirely too dark. Well, if I go up to image and I go to adjustments, there is an adjustment right here called shadows and highlights right above HDR toning. So I'll just click on that. By default, this will probably be closed like this to only give you a slider for shadows and a slider for highlights. So I'll click show more options. And this gives me the ability to push and pull the shadow and mid-tone areas of just that glowing radiating layer. Nothing is happening to the image underneath all of these adjustments are only really working on that glowing radiating layer. So while these shadows and highlights can be used for many things, it's really nice to use it on these radiating glows because it gives me maximum control over that radiating effect. This is typically something that I do as a finishing effect that just puts the icing on the cake. So our last hidden gem is about actions in Photoshop. And I want you to really get to know what an action is. And an action is basically like a VCR that records something for you so that you can always go back and press play whenever you want on any of your other photographs. So if you don't have the actions available over here, you're gonna go to window and click actions. So in the actions pane, all I'm gonna do is add this new tearaway sheet. I'm just gonna call this new action or whatever you wanna call that. Whatever I do, it's gonna record. So if I press Command or Control J to duplicate my background copy right now, anything I do to this background copy, it's recording in this action set. So I'll go to Filter, I'll go to Blur, and I'll go to Gaussian Blur, and that's gonna make that blurring effect that we have for our radiating glow. And now I just need to set that to Soft Light. And anything I do in there, it's already recorded. So if I press Stop, and then I delete this layer, and then press Play on the new action, it's going to pop open and give me that radiating glow effect really quickly and really easily. Now I say learn actions and get really good at actions because not every image is going to need the exact same Gaussian blur. So this action actually tells me to stop, adjust that blur, and when I press play, it's gonna move on and then tell me that I need to adjust those shadows and highlights settings. And that's how actions can really speed up your workflow and your post-production so that you're not constantly repeating the same process over and over. So these are just five hidden gems that I've showed you in Photoshop, and there are literally thousands of them, and I'm discovering new ones every day. I hope it's just inspired you to dig down into the depths and discover some of these on your own. If you want to learn more hidden gems like this, go ahead and check out my courses on Creative Live. So if you're... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, one more time. <laughs>